Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Everything Voice of Us podcast, the African Perspective. It's T-Code here again, behind the microphone for another super duper episode of the podcast. Well, today on the podcast, I'm going to be talking about accents and hopefully it's not going to be a very long episode. I just want to share my thoughts, drop one or two thoughts about accent. I feel like um, there is a need to to sort of like set the record straight and help people understand better accents and what to do with accent, how to apply them, when to apply and when not to apply them. Because this is one um, concept that I've seen to be a challenge for many upcoming voiceover artists. Unfortunately, a lot of them don't know that it's a challenge at all and it's probably one of the reasons why you're not getting jobs as you wish that you you know get them so let's talk about the accent conundrum the accent issue we live in a continent where majority of us in africa are speaking um foreign languages either it's french or it's english Um, Those are like the two dominant languages that I hear most Africans speak, except for, you know, other countries or some countries in Africa that the indigenous languages are um, most prevalent, right? So take, for instance, in Nigeria, we were colonized by uh, the British and then we speak English as our national language language right that's the first language in nigeria so everybody's expected to speak english when you go to um school you speak english in school you speak english in a university um the public service is filled with people who speak english and it's 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 sort of like um understandable reason because we have a lot of languages in nigeria hundreds of languages if i'm not mistaken about at least 500 languages exist in Nigeria. So you can imagine, although there are three dominant languages, which is Yoruba, Igbo, and Hausa, nonetheless, we've got a lot of languages in Nigeria. So just to ensure that there is national harmony, um, it's okay. It, it makes sense to speak English, right? So there's really no problem with that. But then we need to understand that because English wasn't originally our language, when we start to adopt the foreign language, which is not ours, there are chances that the way we would express or speak the language is not as pure as the original speakers. And what happens to that language is when you're trying to speak a language that is not yours, your first language, which is the way your brain knows how to speak, well, it is the basic, the background on which you are laying the new language. And then, so you're speaking English, but the English is going to be accented. It's going to be diluted. It's not going to entirely be original. Um, For some of us, so l- l- let me track back a little bit. So that's how... Many of our forefathers and our parents or grandparents or, you know, people before them who were first introduced to English, that was how they sort of like, um, they were able to, you know, capture the language and make it theirs. They had to fuse it with their, you know, local tongue. And that's where you had accents being displayed in the languages or being displayed in the English that we spoke. So for Igbo people, for instance, they understood the English, but for them to express it in their own words, they would express it with the connotations of the Igbo language, like with 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 the it's it's mixed with the English um, with the Igbo language. Same applies to the Yoruba people, same applied to the Hausa people and different people across Nigeria. Now, what that implies is that there is no one particular accent that ent- that defines the nation entirely, meaning from tribe to tribe, 
the accent varies. All right. So because there's always been this talk about the Nigerian accent and some people are of the school of thought that there is no one Nigerian accent. Well, what I have just explained is more or less the explanation to why we don't have one Nigerian accent. But then you ask, if we don't have one particular Nigerian accent, how how, how is it easy to tell that this person is Nigerian when the person speaks? Well, the idea is very simple. Um, you need to understand that Nigerians in general, apart from, aside from the particular way they speak, there's a general expression of English that is being laid to them or passed to them via the media. So, initially, we had NTA, the National Television Authority, which is the biggest television network in West Africa. And the National Television Authority is in every state in Nigeria, actually. So, the media would usually push a certain type of accent that is really similar across board to the people, which is more closer to, you know, the original English as we knew it to be. Nonetheless, it's not exactly British, but it, it, uh, it is heavily influenced by the British English because we're colonized by the Britons, right? So what you hear in NTA is what we should adopt or is what we would call the Nigerian accent if we're going to say a Nigerian accent. But then you'll agree with me that it's not the British accent exactly. It's just the British English modified by people who spoke their indigenous languages. But then they can agree that, oh, this makes sense on how the English should be expressed, should be expressed. All right. So hence why this seems to be what we call a Nigerian accent. Now, get it right. That accent has been evolving over time because what you heard in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, if you observe very well, it has been a slow decline or a slow change from the original standard of English in terms of British English. So in the 60s or earlier than that and 70s, people still spoke English that was closer to the British English, especially on the media. But as time went on, the English became more diluted and more, in quotes, Nigerialized, <laughs> if there's anything like that. So fast forward to 2023, what has happened to the so-called Nigerian accent? We've had an evolution where the media usually was, you know, NTA, the National Television Authority. But then with the privatization of the media in the 90s, uh, we started having other private TV stations and radio stations. AIT came into the scene. Rhythm came into the scene. Uh, that's Rhythm FM came into the scene. And a lot of other players came into the scene. And then we got exposed to not just the local content, the Nigerian content, but more of the American content. So at that point, a lot of people were watching a lot of American content and that sort of blended into our accent as well. And um, if you perceive or if you observe how we speak right now, especially people who speak on radio, you will see there is that confluence of the British and the American and the Nigerian accent. And you find it difficult to tell, um, okay, this person is not speaking entirely English that is based on the British principle of English. Neither is it speaking entirely based on the English, you know, principled by the American concept of English. So it's more like a confluence of all of those. Why? Because we are heavily influenced by what we listen to, which is primarily via the media. So 
the Nigerian accent has really evolved. And that is how we speak on our day to day. Another point I have not really mentioned is how a lot of us were raised by people. And when I say people, not just our parents, our parents, our teachers, and people in the society. And we listen to them speak to us. And we sort of quickly adopt how they spoke to us. Plus, we also listen to the things from the media. And we kind of merged almost all of this together. And what we speak today is a product of those things. So some people are heavily influenced by media. Some people are heavily influenced by how they hear or how they heard their parents speak to them while growing up. And some people are heavily influenced by how they heard their teachers speaking to them while growing up. Some people were, or some people are heavily influenced by how they heard people in their community speak to them. So whichever, for instance, I, as a person, I was heavily influenced by the media. I watched a lot of um, TV, especially from the British TV. And then I watched a lot of I watched a lot of American cartoons. So mine is kind of like a confluence of both. So what all of this implies is that we have different versions of the Nigerian accent. But in all of these, we still have a, a similitude in how we all speak. And then you can tell that this person is a Nigerian. Because if you're a Nigerian, you can tell when you're listening to someone from the north. And you can tell by their accent same as when you you hear someone from the south speak or from from the east you can tell they are from a, a certain location based on their accent same goes for the american accent for god's sake we've got the northern american accent you've got the south you know from different aspects or from different locations in america you can tell that these people you know they, they they're based in this part of america so essentially that justifies the notion that there is no one particular Nigerian accent. But here's the here's the thing. If you listen to the Nigerian media, if you watch Nollywood, for instance, which is um like that's the movie industry in Nigeria, like Hollywood in America, you will you would you would notice there's a semblance in the way we all speak, right? You notice that. And what's responsible for that, like I said, is the confluence of this different accent and we importing all of this accent in the way we speak and it has been passed on from generation to generation and then the people who are most influential in the passing of this language are the broadcasters. They have kind of like mixed the British and um, way of speaking with the Nigerian accent and they've Americanized it so we have some sort of like what I call the urban English or the urban West African accent or the urban Nigerian accent. This is my theory, all right? So um, first of all, thank you guys for listening to me up until this time. And I'm going somewhere. Now, let's talk about not just accent, but let's talk about how we deliver voiceover jobs in the Nigerian accent or Let's even start from how we audition for voiceover jobs in the Nigerian accent. Now, I want to relate this accent conversation to the animation industry. Voiceovers in the Nigerian English, especially in the commercial genre, has not entirely been Nigerian as it were. So there's a way we read commercials that you're not entirely in the baseline of Nigerian English. You're sort of being slightly broadcast in your approach of reading that script. And it's obvious because I am a voiceover artist and I can read a particular script in the Nigerian accent and I can also read it in a a type of accent that is not entirely Nigerian, but it is Nigerian. So, I don't know if I should call it the voiceover 
the voiceover read or the broadcast read. But I'm going to try. Uh, I'll attempt reading a script right now and a commercial script right now. So, okay, guys. So I'm just going to make use of ChatGPT to get myself a commercial script and let's see how this goes. Okay. Okay. So I just wrote... Oh, I just typed on ChatGPT, write a 60 seconds voice of a commercial script about a local snack in Nigeria for Nigerians and trust ChatGPT to do its thing. Um, just created a copy or a script and I'm going to use that script to explain what I am saying. Uh, so I was talking about how we can read a script in a very basic Nigerian English and we can still read that same script in a type of Nigerian accent that is not really basic. It's 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 also not entirely foreign, but then it sounds broadcast in nature or it sounds very commercial. So if I was going to go Nigerian English, I'm going to sound something like, here's the script. The script says, calling all snack, no snack lovers in Nigeria, get ready to embark on a, a flavor-filled journey with our very own local snack, introducing Ninja Bites, the irresistible snack that celebrates the unique tastes of Nigeria. Now, this in the Nigerian accent goes something like, Calling all snack lovers in Nigeria, get ready to embark on a flavor-filled journey with our very own local snack, introducing Ninja Bites, the irresistible snack that celebrates the unique tastes of Nigeria. That's like... A Nigerian basic accent. Now, if I'm going to, you know, modify it the way I explained, it's going to sound something like, Calling all snack lovers in Nigeria. Get ready to embark on a flavor-filled journey with our very own local snack. Introducing Ninja Bites, the irresistible snack that celebrates the unique taste of Nigeria. So, you can hear from the second read, by the way, I, I mean, this reads, I'm giving them some sort of energy. Uh, I could decide to give them just a very calm tone, but I'm trying to like give it a hard sell kind of commercial read because a lot of times we hear this kind of things on radio and um, yeah, yeah, I'm just kind of like trying to give you the Nigerian experience. By the way, it doesn't define the Nigerian experience necessarily, but that's not the point. The point I'm making is you can tell from the two different reads that one is basic, the basic Nigerian accent, and the other one is slightly, you know, tushed up a little bit. Okay? So I hope I was able to get the point across to you from this explanation. Now, uh, let, let's, let's move on because either of the two reads... To some people, to some um, clients, I, I, either of them works. For some clients, they will choose the first read. Some will prefer the second read. But both are acceptable because they are very relatable to the Nigerian audience. Now, here's where we start to have issues when we talk about accent in the voice, in the Nigerian voiceover industry. Or if this might even be, be an African concept who knows but let's just even limit it to the nigerian voice of our industry when we start to talk about the animation genre of voiceover i have noticed that there is a challenge there is an accent problem in that genre of voiceover and to help you understand the problem is why i've gone to describe or explain the Nigerian accent from way back to how it has evolved to what we know today. You need to understand that our accent, just the way I'm speaking to the microphone right now in this podcast, is just the way we speak on a normal day. Some might sound, you know, a bit different, whatever it is, the different versions of the Nigerian accent, but this is how we speak. We don't go speaking, calling all snack lovers in Nigeria, get ready to embark on a flavor-filled journey with our very own local snacks, introducing, you know, that, that that's obviously like a sales type of stuff or, you know, that kind of commercial read. It's not the normal, calling all snack lovers in Nigeria, 
Get ready to embark on a flavor-filled journey with our very own local snacks. Introducing. So you can tell the difference. Now, when we come to animation, for the longest time, since we've started watching animation cartoons and stuff like that on TV, animation has always been done in foreign accents. We've watched all of the cartoons we watched growing up, Biker Mice, Lion King, Megas XLR, Samurai Jack, um, Dora the Explorer. Like, you can mention Voltron. They were all done in foreign accents, either American accent, maybe British, you know, some 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 accent around the Asian, English, you know, all of that. Now, the implication of that is that unlike in the commercial genre of voiceover that you we've listened to commercials in what we call the Nigerian accent, like I just expressed or displayed right now. We've not had we've not had animations being done in our own Nigerian accents for the longest part. At some point in the two thousands, we had <laughs> we had I, and I remember the Kali and Tewa show, which is sort of animation, right? It was it was kind of animation because it was like a puppet show that had um, voice actors, you know, play the characters. So it was done in the Nigerian accent, no doubt about it. But it wasn't like a super duper top, top, top animation that caught we all spellbound and, you know, kept watching like that. We still had those cartoons on Cartoon Network, Boomerang, um, Nickelodeon, and all of those channels influencing what we understood to be animation and then the voiceover for the animation heavily done in American accent. Now, this is 2023 and we are in an era where the animation industry is beginning to come alive. And we have very, very talented voice actors in Nigeria. But the challenge that I have observed to be in the industry at the, at the moment is that most of our young upcoming voiceover artists, when they see animation scripts, the first thing they want to do is to read the script in the accent of the animations that they grew up watching. So you see a script and you want to read it in the American accent, you want to read it like, for instance, Dexter, or you want to read it like Jimmy Neutron, or you want to read it like um, Bubbles, Buttercup, Blossom. You want to read it like um, uh, uh, Transformers. Um, <laughs> you want to read it like any of those characters in Transformers or any, you just want to read it like those characters that you watched growing up and you idolized. And you just want to, you know, and, and, and those accents are heavily American or whatever or whichever country is responsible for, you know, putting that cartoon together. The downside of this, the downside of this is that when an animator in Nigeria creates an animation or a cartoon, that context, that the background is Nigerian, that formula of American accent for animation cannot apply in a Nigerian animation. Because the animation that is being done in Nigeria by Nigerians is supposed to express the Nigerian reality as long as that's what the script connotes. So if the storyline goes something around, oh, the characters live in Lagos, you know, they're all, it's an epic story. They're based in Nigeria and all of that. In Nigeria, we don't talk American. Hence, your American accent is not going to work. It's not going to work. You need to, you need to be proud of your accent and express it when you are auditioning for an animation job or an animation voiceover 
that is Nigerian based. I have seen this challenge across board a lot of times with young voiceover talents. You get an animation script and you want to sound American. And you know the challenge with this? In fact, they do two things. It's either they're trying to do an impression of an uh, of a cartoon character or you're just trying to do an American accent or a cartoonized American accent. And unfortunately, a lot of us are not trained enough. We are not natural enough or it's not our nature. It's not in our speaking nature to be able to express those accents well enough. So one of the things I ask myself is, well, if if you're doing this for fun, you're trying to do an impression of Scooby-Doo. Oh, no, no. Or maybe of... <laughs> I watched some old cartoons, by the way. You're trying to do an impression of um um Flamestone or an impression of um Spider-Man or whatever it is you're trying to do. If it's for fun, kudos. That's great. But if it's for business if it's if it's real voiceover work and you're doing an impression of those guys you better know that you're doing that for their market <laughs> and and this is what i mean if you're going to be doing an impression of spider-man for instance or iron man or any of those characters whatever character you grew up watching baby whatever it is and you think you want to get a job in the animation industry you need to understand that those accents are practicable in those countries. And that is your best bet. In the Nigerian industry, in the Nigerian animation industry, it will not be appreciated that you export those accents to a Nigerian animation. So if there's a Nigerian Superman, for example, we don't want to hear a Clark Kent accent playing a Nigerian Superman. You need to sound Nigerian. And... You don't you want to realize how deep this challenge is until until you begin to experiment with the colloquial expressions that a normal Nigerian will use versus the one that or the ones that an American will use. For instance, it's not natural for us to say uh Holy moly! You know, I hear that a lot in American comics and all of that. Holy moly! Holy macaroni! It's it's really not Nigerian. Nigerians would rather say, Yay! Yekba! Omo! <laughs> These are the ways we will react. We ain't gonna say, Holy macaroni! Did you get this? So it's not the way we speak or communicate day to day and why am i you know saying all of this is because i'm trying to send a message to nigerian voice of artists especially the up and coming ones that honestly i appreciate what you guys are doing i appreciate the fact that you're able to mimic to to do an impression of foreign accents and all of that but if you're going to do voice animation voiceovers you need to be authentic you need to be nigerian you need to be real except the script says otherwise except there is a character that is not entirely nigerian <laughs> okay that's not nigerian or speaks in speaks in an accent that is not exactly nigerian so if that is the case if what they want is something American or something German or something, you can tweak your accent to towards that. But if you're a Nigerian and the script says you, uh, uh, or, and, this, and, and the story is about a Nigerian character, you need to be Nigerian. All right. So this is the explanation of what I call the Nigerian, the accent conundrum. I'm probably going to name this episode the Nigerian accent conundrum or the Nigerian accent challenge. Because, uh, yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's very relatable to Nigeria. And I'm, I'm sure it's going to be relatable to people of other African descent as well. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. And um, that is what I, I really had in mind. 
to to discuss today or to talk about today on the on the podcast. So the lessons you should learn from this is that if you want to do animation in Nigeria, animation voiceovers in Nigeria, you should sharpen your skills in learning how to act with the Nigerian accent. Um, that's how it works, really. You need to be proud of your accent. You don't have to be able to speak some American accent to be able to do animations, especially in Nigeria. Not really. It doesn't really work like that. All right, so thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the podcast. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Um, you can send your feedback or your thoughts or your comments you can send them to me via our email at everythingvoiceovers at gmail.com. Everythingvoiceovers at gmail.com. And uh, I'll be happy to hear what you have to say or your thoughts about what I've spoken about today. I mean, the Nigerian accent or the accent conundrum or something outside but voiceover related. Or if there's something you've been willing to say or to tell me about on the podcast for so long, I'd really like to see your messages, your emails. Uh, via everythingvoiceovers at gmail.com. Also, we're working on a Telegram community where from time to time we can drop stuff about what we're doing in the podcast. Um, if you want to join the Telegram community, you can check the show notes. I'll drop, I mean, we have the link of the community right there in the show notes. So we'll be happy to have you join our community on Telegram. And that's it for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I remain T-Code. Until then, I say keep learning and keep getting better. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe, leave a comment and tell someone about it. Follow the podcast on everything videos on all social media platforms. Thanks for listening and see you on the next episode. This podcast is a Coded Voiceovers production.